And we are back, you are chatting with John P. Today, I'm going to be answering some questions that you have been asking me in the comments in other videos, and also, res I'll be responding to some of these comments. I'll admit, some of these comments that you guys leave there sometimes are pretty funny, and sometimes I am also a little bit sad because sometimes people do get offended, and in no way do I ever intend to offend someone about their watch choices. I think that compared to a lot of people, out there, I'm pretty reasonable in terms of the way that I view the watches, so I hope that no one has actually become upset over anything that I've said, <laughs> but, but some of these comments are just absolutely hilarious. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank you for coming back for another episode. Do not forget to like and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. And also, very sorry I've been kind of tapering back the video load here. As you can see, we still haven't redone the studio yet. There's been so many things going on in the office here that have been out of our control, things with the lighting, the cabling, and it just is taking more of my time than it really should. So don't worry, really are. I really am working to uh, to make more videos for you and there's a bit of a backlog. So please stay tuned, like and subscribe. <laughs> it will kind of nudge me along to keep shooting these things out. And of course, this is all for DelrayWatch.com where we really do try to deliver a lot of value for you. Today on the wrist, 16550, the early example of the Rolex Explorer 2. I love this thing, creamy tritium loom the old movement, the fat bezel with the numbers on that. I love this thing, Future Classic, did a video on that as well. So let's hop into this before you guys fall asleep. Oh, Instagram, the real John P. <laughs> I had to throw that in there, one last thing. So the first question or comment rather, I'm tired of all the watch channels taking eBay down. Maybe he means talking eBay down. So eBay protects its buyers, all one needs to do is use common sense. Well, that's true, right? eBay does have great protection, I'll admit. I did a video where I, I talk about eBay and I say, you know, a lot. there's a lot of negative things surrounding it. I can tell you that while there is protection, the process is rather long and drawn out and there's a lot of time where the buyer and the seller can kind of go back and forth with someone located in a part of the world where, you know, they really are piecing together sometimes comments in different languages and trying to figure out what happened. And ultimately the resolution usually is, hey, um, you know, whatever they think, right? So that sure they have procedures, but depending on how you word it, some translation, it can be a hassle and the time frames are 30 days there, 30 days back. And we've even gone through disputes sometimes and even myself personally buying things on eBay where it took 60 days some, sometimes to get my money back. And even if you win the dispute in your favor on eBay, you still have PayPal. So let's say you win, then the other person can contest on PayPal. And then you have to go back and forth on PayPal in the same kind of manner because while eBay and PayPal used to be very connected, now they, they operate separately. So there's two dispute processes. So sure, you're pretty protected and there is a dispute resolution process, but that process takes forever. Is it worth the few hundred dollars savings that you might get for a watch that you don't know where it's coming from and you have to fight for it for months? I don't know, that's for you to decide, but I think it's absolutely crazy. I'd rather be wearing my watch than arguing about a missing screw in the case pack, to be very honest with you. Here's here's one, John P, you need new glasses. The new Omega is so ugly. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Now. Let me say everyone has, uh, you know, they're they're entitled to their own opinion, right? Everyone has what they like, what they don't like. But I'll say that this, and they're talking about the new Omega Seamaster wave dial with the ceramic bezel. I'll say that this is one of the hottest watches out there. We get so few of these in. We get few of these in compared to the Rolex Submariner because they just go so quickly and people don't want to sell them because they really are a great value. I did another video about that where I talk about spec for spec how the new Seamaster is actually it far, it surpasses the Rolex Submariner ceramic date just based on the stats alone. So you can check that out as well. I don't get it. The market really loves this watch and it really goes to show that uh, everyone has their own opinion. So the next one, for a $40,000 watch, they are selling the watch an adventure trip with the Italian military, flight tickets, hotels, and experience. Now this is in reference to a video I did talking about you know how Panerai has a couple watches and how Panerai's sales have kind of slumped down. And there's one watch that's forty thousand dollars, and and if you bought it, you'd get to go and you'd get to you know have an experience with the Italian army or whatever they call it there. So. I received so many comments about this, so many people saying, hey, you know, you get this experience, and 
yeah, in some way you kind of do. So what I did is I took it upon myself and I wanted I wanted to make a video about this, but I, I don't really want to, you know, talk about things that are kind of negative, right? So I made a video, I contacted Panerai directly. I also contacted their most popular boutiques. And the thing is, the guys working in the boutiques, they never saw this watch. One, one manager of a boutique in the most popular boutique, I won't name it, but he told me that it was only made available to the most discerning of Panerai collectors. So there's, you know, some guys somewhere that buy every Panerai watch that were only offered this watch. And it turned out that at the time of me making the video, the trip had already happened. So Panerai themselves told me, hey, the trip already happened. The watch is not available for purchase, unfortunately. And then I asked them about the trip um, and they kind of told me that, you know, you got to spend a couple of hours with the Italian Navy doing some drill routines. Now, if you want to go to boot camp, go to boot camp and join the army, or maybe you can find some club where people do military reenactments. But to buy a watch that's twice the price for a different color scheme as something else they're offering, and then basically be paying $20,000 to go to boot camp for a few hours, I don't know. I don't think that's a very compelling argument, but I suppose maybe the most discerning of Panerai collectors really enjoyed it. If you're one of these guys, please leave in the comments below if you did in fact enjoy it. And also the way that the conversation read the trip and the, the, the airlines and all that stuff was not included, which many people were kind of led to believe by some of the marketing. So leave in the comments below about this one. I love the fiery conversations um, and I don't hate Panerai. I just think that currently they're underappreciated or possibly properly appreciated. Leave in the comments below. Um, vintage movement servicing. What issues are there with this? Well, with vintage Rolex, there's not too many issues besides if the watch is improperly maintained or there's rust. But with some older movements like a shield or some of the other movements out there or even some early um, Frederick, Frederick Piguet's, yeah, there can be some problems with sourcing parts depending on who you take it to. So trust your watchmaker and the best watchmakers can actually make a part if they need to if your watch has interesting complications and it's very old. Otherwise, if it's a base movement where there's a variation produced today, you're probably okay. But once again, the watch could be rusty, which means the watch is probably going to die a very slow death, but you can enjoy it in the meantime and just make sure you know where you're buying your watches from so you can avoid that problem. Does P and John P stand for provocative? I don't know what this means, but sure. Okay, let's go with that one. Anybody else find H. Moser too gaudy? Well, yeah, H. Moser makes some pretty shiny watches, and for many people, that's not really their scene. A lot of their watches are pretty high polish, and their dials can be bright at times, but... They do a great job with their movements, so it's a trade-off, and if you want a good value on a very high-end movement, Moser does make a great watch, but shiny watches are not for everyone, and they don't do a great job with their sports watches. They've got a Pioneer, which still looks very dressy, and now they have a dive version, which also still looks very dressy. So that's just in the nature of the brand, but that's what you get a lot of times in high-end manufacturers. Okay, Vacheron. What Vacheron would you recommend, and what target price? It all depends, right? It depends where your budget is. I'd say that in terms of what Vacheron might be underappreciated, all of their dress watches are very underappreciated in terms of sports watches, which is <laughs> the most common category of what people are looking to buy. You can buy an early overseas from Vacheron automatic for maybe $6,000, I think. The prices may have gone up a little bit because of the whole steel sports watch thing that's going on, but if you can get an early Vacheron overseas between five and seven grand, somewhere in there, I think it's, it's, it's a lot of great value for the money, and you kind of get to be part of the whole stainless steel, like, Genta Genta-esque sports watch style thing that's going on. So that's an option for you. There's so many options but that's a pretty good one. Do you ever regret selling a watch? Yes, I regret selling a couple of watches. Before Delray Watch, I used to trade watches on the internet a lot. Um, I, I had so many watches when I was only a collector. And I would say that I had this one Gerald Genta. It was like a Gerald Genta by Retro Sport, but it was an early one. It was a smaller one and it was all white. So I didn't wear it. I was in Ohio. You know, it's a... It, it's really no place to be wearing a white watch. It's usually cold. So it's white. All white is kind of a summer, you know, a summer theme, I guess you could say. And you see it down here in Miami, but in Ohio, I didn't. So I didn't really wear the watch. So I did sell it. 
And this was in a period of time where no one really was drawn to these Genta watches. Genta kind of just fell apart and ultimately Bulgari purchased them. Uh, but, you know, I just didn't wear it. So I sold it, but now I kind of wish I had it because I'm in Miami and, and Genta is kind of coming back because of the whole steel sports watch craze. Everyone's kind of really be making watches a passion and a hobby. So Genta's getting a lot more appreciation, including his brand from back when. So I do unfortunately regret selling that and I haven't seen any out in the market that are just like it. So if you see an all white Genta, make sure to hit me up at DelrayWatch.com and I will probably buy it. So guys, hopefully I answered some of these questions. If you didn't read the comments and you don't go there before, please do. There's a lot of interesting information and I do respond to as many as possible as well as Instagram, uh, the real John P. So this has been really fun. And also, once again, if anyone was offended by anything that I said, I don't get it. I'm not sure that, that I ever will. Sure, you know, we all have our, our certain preferences and tastes, but at the end of the day, we're all trying to enjoy this hobby. So that's the way I see it. And I, I know that most of you do as well. So <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's not take anything too seriously. We're all having fun here on the internet. So thanks, guys. You've been watching another episode of Chatting with John P. Ciao.